We're at the Grill today in the former Four Seasons space, one of the most iconic rooms in all of New York. Speaking of iconic, said, uh, Chef Mario Carbone is here to cook prime rib, my favorite dish. He says he's perfected it. Let's find out if he has. During the 50s and the 60s, I think prime rib got a terrible reputation. It really fell into disrepute. I think largely because of weddings and catering affairs where you had this sort of blob of gray beef that gets sliced off. It's always overdone. It's never cooked right. But you're bringing it back. Tell me about that. We are. We're bringing it back. It's obviously as important as, as you said. It's a it's a key dish to have on a menu of this style. So tell me about the process that you narrow. I mean, so you must have gone through like sous vide and roasting and We went through and... every distributor, every farm. We went through every cooking technique and we landed on probably the oldest one, right? Spit roasting. And the first thing we do is take the bones off, which is, which is abnormal. And then that slab of bone is treated as barbecue. So it's a 12 hour smoke. It gets a dry rub, close to a Montreal style seasoning. So by taking the bones off also, it exposes that cap, that underbelly, so we can clean that up really nicely. We can get a perfect eye. We tie it really tight so that it's a one, as uniform a size as possible. That gets its own dry rub, and then it goes on a spit roast. It takes about four hours, depending on the weight. It cools for upwards of two more hours. And then right before service starts, it gets a second rub and a second application of spice to really make sure we have a heavy, heavy crust. And then at that point, it goes into a very hot um, convection oven and you really set the crust without warming the inside again. And you're basically just reducing that as to... Yeah, you're, this is like a one minute, 475, blast it, don't let it get warm again inside. You don't want the juices running. And then that goes onto the cart? And that goes onto the cart. It's which, not uh, this thing that's just steaming all night in the right. wagon. Which is what gave Prime Rib its terrible reputation. That and with. shitty weddings. Yeah, exactly. We buy a Prime, not aged beef. And I know that that devastates you. It, do, it doesn't devastate me. It devastates you. It you're doesn't, a, you're because, a dry Because a dead aged, atom, I, it doesn't devastate me. I happen to love the flavor of aged beef. To a point of potential detriment. Well, it, it's that, it to me, is it, it, it's the height of luxury. It's the height of the artisanal craft of the butcher. So let me explain to you why I don't believe it's appropriate for this dish. I, I'm fully, I'm Across I'm the board. This is a slow, long cook. Over time, especially the way we do it, ours is spit roasted. It's losing water weight, it's intensifying. Everything that happens during the process of dry aging is sort of happening in a sped up way while we're cooking it. You're, you're expelling moisture in the same way An that the aging process. Intensifying flavor. Right. Every time we try to do that with an already aged product, mm. it was way too intense. The one prime rib you offer for us, for here, should not be that. That no, and, and I totally get that. So I think that we have sort of talked about this enough. I think it's time that we tried it. Bring the wagon. It's all about me eating. This is sort of the grand tradition. Yes, right? and you there's a conversation that's had with the customer, thin or thick, and then once he's done that, he'll uh, offer to put the jus over the top and then potentially ask if you'd, if you'd like a fresh grated horseradish over the top of that. And then it comes with a side of Dijon mustard and horseradish cream. All right, well, this is magnificent looking. And I see what you see. I mean, it's, I, honestly, it looks like you sous vide this. It's edge to edge, medium rare. Tell me about the jus, because it smells. The jus is made from brisket. So it's a, it's, a, it's a costly jus, but it's very intense for it not having that tacky bone quality. I mean, I can't really stand in front of a prime rib this long and not try some. So I think we should just get stuck in. And of course, I'm going to start at the edge. Wow, look at the bone. It looks like a, it looks like barbecue. It looks like a Memphis dry rib. It is 100% barbecue. There we go. Wow. The, God, it really is that like Montreal style seasoning. You can smell, smell the pepper. The horseradish is really pungent. But then there is this underlying beefy smell. And a lot of that I'm sure is a jus, but it's also the prime rib. Okay, I'm going in. Wow. First of all, the crunch. On the outside, it's like it's like the sear on the steak. I mean, this has got such a great beef flavor, but you are getting that heat from the pepper, and the Montreal style seasoning. The horseradish just obviously just cuts right through it and gives it a, sort of that tang that kind of excites the palate. But then there is a really profound beefiness to it, and it's just like a long braise, right? You're getting those deep, deep notes 
I have to know, is the texture like you can just pull this apart? It's like, it's that tender, look at that. It seems the Englishman's yeah. eating the American cut. The yeah. <laughs> American's eating the Englishman's cut. It, it looks like I've learned something from being here. So let's talk about the English cut versus the American cut, because growing up in England, that was just called prime rib. You would never eat this much beef traditionally in England. This is like American exceptionalism on a plate right here, right? It's like- It's excessive American. I mean, yeah, it cuts just get bigger and bigger, 16, 20 ounces. But yeah. traditionally, in, in on a roast beef cut, they would just carve off like tender slivers of roast beef, right? And very much like that. Nine out of 10 of our customers choose this. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very rare person who, who wants the English cut, but it was important to us that we trained the team on how to do it, and now we were ready for it. As delicious and compelling as that is, and I will get back to you in short this, order. This may not be a knife and fork moment. Wow, look at that. Look at the color of that. It's cooked slowly all the way through, but you haven't hammered it. Like if that was barbecue, it would be, it would be gray, and, right? Yeah, we don't want that. Let's go in there. Wow. You can't possibly get that from carving it to order off the roast. No. Mm. You'll fight with all the meat around it and you won't get any of that, that, that love. It's amazing. I mean, it, it really feels like barbecue. It has a crust, it's tender and supple inside, but the flavor is much more classic steakhouse, peppery. It's got some heat to it, it's nice. Best. I'm not willing to give up on the aging, I'm just saying, but You're... I respect, listen, you know a lot more about cooking than I do. I, I just don't want your preconceived notions to infiltrate all situations. Is this to going to knock off Smith & Walensky's as your top prime rib? I want to know that right now. Well, probably not, but I would much rather eat in this room. So what I'll do is I'll sneak over there, I'll bring a prime rib with me. What is now, it? And then- What is it about Smith & Walensky? The thing that I love about Smith & Walensky is I've been going there since I could afford to eat out. That's the meal that I had with my dad for the first time there. And like that has just resounded in my memory. And hopefully, I won't have to choose for a long time. I'll just be eating both of them. But that said, this is absolutely spectacular. The craft, the love that has gone into this, the fact that it's so referential to the past, yet satisfies the modern carnival, I think is a testament to its greatness. You are the modern carnival. <laughs> Chef, thank you so much. My it was pleasure. a real pleasure. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna sit here and argue about prime rib with Mario and eat more prime rib. I will see you on the next episode of The Meat Show. This is Filipino barbecue. Always served on a stick, must be marinated overnight, and always gets the same kind of sweet, tangy sauce.